Yeah, I'm uh, Charlie Cheshire, I'm pit master at uh, here Community Barbecue. I was in the construction business for 40 years, and then I decided that uh, I wanted to get out of that, hand it off to my younger sons, and then I said, uh, I'd like feeding people. Uh, I had a, uh, built a uh, disaster relief barbecue trailer back in 2014, and I wanted to just feed people that were in need. And uh, so that's what started the desire to uh, have a way to make money. Uh, as a friend of mine, he always said, uh, you need a profit, a for-profit for business for your nonprofit habits. So in order to support that, the uh, money needed to feed people for free, I, had to, I started a business, a restaurant, that I can take the pro some of the proceeds of that and divert it to towards feeding those in need. Uh, there's a lot of barbecue all over. Uh, some of it is like fast food barbecue chains and stuff like that. Then there are those craftsmen pit masters that uh, take pride in cooking all night long uh, to put the best product on the table. And that's what we do. Uh, so since we were real good at it, I said, well, if I'm going to sell it, I got to sell what I'm best at and uh, barbecue is what we're best at. Since we moved here to Wiley and Saxe area 22 years ago, we always wanted to make an impact on the community, help the community, help uh, those in need and stuff like that. So naturally, when we, gonna, when we started a restaurant, the name community just came together. The, one of the first things that we started uh, was what we called our barbecue bucks. Our barbecue bucks is kind of a pay forward program where when you finish dining, you have an opportunity to, to leave some money for barbecue bucks. We take that money, pool it together, and then make meals for homeless, low income, or like that. So I would say probably one of the first meaningful moments that we can remember was a grandmother and grandson came in to eat. So she comes in and sits over at table 11 and uh, tells the server, I, I can't pay for the meal, um, but I heard you have a program for that called Barbecue Bucks. And so whenever someone comes in to use the Barbecue Bucks or to collect on it, somebody comes and gets me, the pit master. And I come and I eat with them. I sit down at the table ask them what they want, place the order. So this young boy had a little iPad and he he would not make eye contact. I mean, never. It was always, he was always buried. And if his grandmother talked to him, he just looked down and said, yes ma'am, uh, yeah, a sausage, barbecue sauce. But he never would look up. About the fourth month, I sat at the table and I said, hey, y'all want the usual? A chopped brisket sandwich? And I said, and Frankie, I said, you want? And he looked up from his iPad and goes, I want some sausage. And I go, and she, the grandmother goes, wow, he's talking to somebody else other than me. So he made eye contact with me for the first time. When we say we're traditional, not typical, your typical barbecue restaurant is a restaurant where you walk into, kind of go into a corral type line and, and, and serve food off of a line onto a tray. Uh, so you'll tell somebody, give me this and that and that, and then you'll go sit down. We're, we're traditional in the sense that um, we want to serve you. So we're uh, a full service dine-in restaurant. Uh, also our traditions are the old school type of smoking uh, barbecue meats. We, uh, we smoke low and slow uh, and, and we make everything handmade. So we're traditional in the sense of that. We have traditional values uh, to help people, uh, to help our neighbor. I went to a bank in Mansfield, Texas one day to cash a check, uh, dressed in my safety gear construction uh, outfit. And uh, they had a young lady there uh, that waited on me. And she looked at me and she said, uh, do you own a barbecue business? I'm thinking, are you talking to me? And I go, well, no, I, I have a construction company. And she goes, oh, okay. Well, when you do open a barbecue business, you need to sell 
what's called miracle fries. And I said, what's miracle fries? And she says, well, you take French fries and then you put queso on them. And then you put chopped brisket on top of that. And she says, and you call it miracle fries. And I said, why do I, why would I call it miracle fries? She goes, well, first of all, my name's miracle. And she goes, so I named them after me. And she goes, and I said, well, then why is your name miracle? And she says, well, my mom had a difficult pregnancy and the doctor had said that she didn't think either I or her were going to make it and said, maybe we ought to re she ought to reconsider this birth. And my mom said, no, said, this child will be a miracle. And she was a healthy, you know, seven pound, three ounce baby girl. And uh, her mom named her Miracle. So she said, so when you start your restaurant, open your restaurant, you got to have Miracle fries on it. And she says, and then call me so I can come eat there. And I said, okay, you know, so she cashed my check and I went on my way. This was about six months prior to me even, even thinking about uh, doing a restaurant, but I never forgot that all of a sudden when I'm here and walking in this building, you know, remodeling it and saying, am I really going to open a restaurant? Well, one of my first items on my menu had to be Miracle Fries. Say that you've done 30,000 meals in three years uh, that you've given away for free it is a great accomplishment, but I'll be glad when it's 300,000, 3 million meals, then I'll say, Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, my name is Andy Cheshire. I am the owner here at uh, Community Barbecue and Grill. Our family has lived a mile and a half from this restaurant for uh, 20 years, 22 years actually. Um, and so, wow, well, this was a, a, a steak and country buffet place years and years ago. And this is where we came to eat as kids and that my parents brought us here. And so this was not so much taking a new job as it was just coming home and being able to be part of something just much bigger than ourselves. We always say that, you know, we don't have customers, we just have guests because we want people to come in and sit down at this table the same they would at our table at our house. We rely on so many different groups to help facilitate our mission in being able to feed hungry people. And so there are groups that are doing tremendous work and need that resource. And so we are always looking for, for partners and groups to, again, just come together as the community. That, that first dollar, um, which, which we have on the wall here, is, is like that first bite, but food that you know that had so much love and care that went into it. In the frame, uh, it has the, the verse from uh, 1 Peter uh, in chapter 5, where it says, you know, to take care of those un in your charge, um, not because you have to, but because you're willing. And that dollar is the first but even that dollar still serves under that purpose of we do things differently because we want to serve. It's not a just a business model of say, well, we want to be different or, you know, we want to provide this service that other people don't. We're not trying to fill a niche. We're trying to do it the right way, the best way that we can and that fits our values.